Hello and welcome to another episode of Six of One and Half a Dozen of the Other. I'm here with the poet Jeff Emmett O'Brien and Greg Clifford and I'm your host Rachel Lally and this is the podcast where we discuss thought experiments. So we are all artists, we're all creatives. So to start us off today I'd like you to tell me what is the most controversial piece of art that you have watched, seen, consumed, listened to? Any takers? The first thing that comes to my mind is a gig I've seen. A French band. Oh, God, I can't even remember what they're called now. But the, the front man, real slender dude, he started to kind of rub himself up a bit, and then he actually proceeded to, to masturbate on stage. I know exactly who you're on about. And it was, it was the same. Is it Gigi Allen? No, no, it was a much, much no. smaller act. It was actually just a thing. I was, I was the support act that night. Uh, they were French psychedelic. Oh, I can't remember, but anyway, it was you know, it is what it is. Masturbation on stage. That's that's very strange. I, I, you know what? I'm torn between two because on one hand, I, I was actually my mind was going to be blown there if it said Gigi Allen Palmer. I need to close this window um, <laughs> because that would be one of my picks for a personal preference. That would be that Gigi Allen would be number one. Like Gigi Allen has done mad stuff on stage. Uh, very controversial. I wouldn't classify it as art, but the fact that he did and his followers were really interesting. But I mean, I also I really appreciate uh, the last judgment by Michelangelo to be a very controversial piece for its time. I agree absolutely. I was thinking of the cultural context thing. Sorry, Rachel. Go because for when Michelangelo painted, uh, it was looked down upon. It was like a cause a big divide between the the Catholic Church and his followers because a lot of his uh, character caricatures were painted in the nude. And uh, the Catholic Church didn't like to have that painting in what would be such a holy place. Um, so I actually looked into it a lot uh, during times looking at uh, studying kind of parts of history. And uh, it was very controversial for the time. And even I'm torn between what, what the answer should be. So that's another one I want to throw in. Hmm. Um, I, I'm going to go with a film. I think a uh, few films that I've seen, like 100 Days of Sodom mm. or... Um, Irreversible to really, really striking films, or, or Man Bites Dog, the Belgian film. I think one of those pieces would certainly be something that has uh, had a massive impact on me in a, in like, in a really messed up way. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd have to agree with you. Like, I think uh, Salo is one of those films um, that is like you have to sit and kind of go, is this kind of right that it's a film or like should this be censored in some way and then I guess um you know we watched a film uh during the week the Lords of Chaos about the band Mayhem and like their gigs were absolutely they were absolutely mayhem and like that the uh first singer at one stage like cut his arms in the middle of a gig and like bled all over everyone in the audience and stuff so I guess that is up there um, with, with other bands that I've seen that like use kind of animal blood and stuff and like throw it on the audience. So I guess that's pretty controversial as well. So uh, yeah. today's question then is, um, and I'll start with a quote from Oscar Wilde, if I may. Um, so he is quoted as saying, there is no such thing as a moral or immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. So our question today is, should art be censored? No. Ever. I'm doing it. I, I don't think it should be, no. No, I, I think you have to be fair game. I think anything is kind of fair game in an artistic realm, isn't it? I mean, I look. I, go for there. Uh, like, but, I mean, before we have this conversation, like, this is, this is a conversation saying, well, like, what would one define as art? So, but I just want to get, I want to get everyone's opinion of that before we go forward. Sorry for interrupting you, GC, but I just need to know what your opinion of art itself and what qualifies as art is before continuing. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. So then you're kind of asking like, is it a combination of uh, imagination, skill, craft? But then again, that's kind of high art. And then sometimes that can just be expression. And sometimes you can have expression without form and something that's a little bit more spontaneous and that can be perceived as art as well and it is art i mean just you know john cage like he kind of 
he wrote one piece called Imaginary Landscapes, number four, and that's for 12 radios and 24 people. So there's two people per radio, uh, one controlling the frequency, one controlling the volume. Is that music? If that's, it's kind of up for debate. So it's kind of like, is that seen as art or is it seen as bollocks? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it's a real, I mean, isn't, isn't art something that makes people think and challenges people's perceptions and, and helps them connect? I mean, some, some, I've always thought that some of the pieces of art that have stayed with me the most have been the pieces that I've absolutely hated, you know, which I found really important for my own growth as an artist to see what stretches me, you know, and, and like, what, like asking the questions, why, why is this impacting me? And why is this staying in my memory so long? Mm. Um, a classic point art is a really difficult question. It's a really difficult question. It's not just about like imagination and creation, you know, cause then like, say our chefs artists, Yes. Say, absolutely, yeah. Mm. Why? But then, but then if like you're you're not a good chef though, if you're making just a good bowl of cuddle, it's more. Of a mean, would you censor? Yeah. Would you censor a chef though? <laughs> oh, yeah, if the depends. Was cooking. I mean, I like, just let Emma speak first. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, your time's um, up now, Jeff. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that, like, it depends what the what the chef was cooking. I mean, if, if the chef is perceiving that, like, for his artistic taste, he's going to cook like a human. Like, where does the barrier come with that? Yeah. But, but should, yeah. should he just it, because it's art, or should that be censored? Well, I think art is often a mistake. Well, I think that, I think art coincides with expression, and I think that's why a meaning of art is always subjective. Um, that's why you can't answer it, because art is completely subjective. So one's opinion, like, like for example, like, like you're talking about a chef. Me and you can go to a restaurant, and a chef can whip out a quiche, and I'd be like, that's, that's art, that's amazing. And you'd be like, no, that's just shy. Like, you know what I mean? You'll never, like, it's very, like, oftentimes <laughs> people will, uh, will have similar kind of preference, but like, I love how you just meant, it's a huge you, art, we, we if you go to a restaurant and ha, the, the chef can do absolutely anything and and your your first thing is, we go to a restaurant, the chef can have a quiche. Yeah, but, but the point that I'm trying to make there is it could be the most mundane of things, the most whatever, and someone can, ex, can so, still so say that. Can I just time. ask you a question about the quiche? Um, is it then, is the art actually this is it goes beyond the quiche actually <laughs> is it about the process or the presentation now, yeah, I well, this I, is... i'm just posing this here because yeah. the process could be artistic but maybe the presentation is a little bit vulgar or it's just okay well of... the point is the quiche isn't really controversial i mean whether you think <laughs> it's good art or not like you're gonna be what like it's made okay, out of human it's meat. but i think um the question is more like when art for example like if you look at the way documentary and uh, films were used um, as Nazi propaganda, for example, or um, when when it's used in a in a dangerous way, or when you see how maybe certain games or music or lyrics can have a harmful effect on society, or in like propagating a, a certain kind of view or. Um, yeah, indoctrinating people. Something though, when you censor something, you you force it into the underground, and then it, it it gives it a certain type of popularity. Like that film that comes to mind was Natural Born Killers, absolutely awful film, but it, it, everybody watched it because it was banned. It's like that Father Ted thing, you know what I mean? Like nobody was going to the cinema to see the the foreign film, but the two priests start you know campaigning outside and protesting, and then the, the thing is the biggest selling film of of all time so like censorship is a really dangerous thing and on the one hand like like if you're go going to like censor propaganda then you're going it's you're, you're you're censoring like left or right wing propaganda instead of actually 
kind of educating people around it. I mean, you're seeing how propaganda is being used around the world at the moment. And in a way, like in America, they're censoring the media by not, by not censoring the media, that they're censoring the media. Like the way Trump speaks of fake news and, and, and stuff, it's a, a different type of censorship. So it's like that. Like if you're going to cook somebody, like that's illegal anyway. So you, it's not like you don't, you have to censor it. Like if you kill somebody, like cannibalism is illegal. So it's not censorship to say that you, you that shouldn't happen. That's just a law. Whereas anything that's within the laws, Mm, I don't know. Um, like, I mean, you'd have to look at at the, at the laws everywhere. Like, but if someone kills themselves, or you, you know, or they you know self harm, and and they call that art, like, should that be? Should there again, be rules around it, or that's not against. It's not against the laws of, of like a lot of modern society that you like. It doesn't say that you. I mean, they've uh, declassified suicide as a crime. I, I don't think anybody should ever like film themselves doing it. Like, it would, I don't think that for me. I don't think that, that, think that's art. I think that's goes into a different realm of what's happened with um, like social media and why people want these the the one for likes and and for attention. So no necessary. unless like, but I don't know the context. So in Greg's situation with the band in France, like that could be considered sexual assault if he's exposing himself and masturbating to people who weren't prepared for that or, you know, it could trigger trauma or it Some might be a very leave. unpleasant experience. Some people did leave. I think it's good that like a bouncer didn't fuck him off the stage. He was kind of free to do it and those who didn't enjoy it are also free to leave, you know? So like, you, you even see that with, with like the Joker, when that came out, loads of people were like up in arms about it and outraged and people were getting up and leaving the, uh, the theater and all that. So uh, you, need, you need to know like, like, yeah, Grant, like, right, look, someone's pulling the plum off themselves on the stage, <laughs> but like, I would like to know what, what he finds artistic about that. Mm. I, w- I would love to know what he finds artistic about because I think what's important to remember here is that when like uh, this alright so I'm going to start off by saying this to, to say that we can censor any art is just wrong you, like you cannot censor art and there are some cases that, that things like this happen that it's it's borderline art and not art and, and like for example someone exposed themselves a prime example but um, that's a very marginal uh, it's a very small number in terms of art and the positives of art really outweigh the negatives of art in that case so I think you always have to take a little bit of negative with a positive um, I would question though what, how that was artistic or what, what defined that as art because it's very easy to say that you know, it is art but like I said unless there's an actual reason for it being artistic I, like there has to be some reason I was saying, is, is that just shock value what he's doing like, is it art or is it just shock value? Is shock not art, though? Does that? No, well, no, no. If you're into shock around shock. Of semantics of art, and is it more, yeah, shock factor? Is it entertainment? Is it, is it some kind of protest? I suppose, for, for me, it'd be like, what, what does art mean? Mm-hmm. Um, how would you define it? Okay, for me, art is a means of expression, understanding the world I reside in, where I create a synthesis of technique and uh, imagination i suppose that that's kind of it and i try to present in a certain way it, for, for me it's it's a way of conveying uh how i'm i'm feeling or understanding the world around me and then it, other people seem to connect to that those same feelings and when I, when i'm when i'm viewing art of somebody else's art i seem to understand my own life and they, they, my own world around me in a in a way also you know what I mean and I like being challenged I like, I, I like I always like my opinions being challenged that's that's just me I like you know what I mean like in any type of argument I like being I, sometimes you know I like getting to the stage where I'm wrong and I'm like okay I, I actually didn't know that that's how I felt uh, and I think art for me does that an awful lot of the time Definitely. I think, to be honest with you, uh, just thinking about it now, I think if I was to define art, uh, 
I would probably look at how art is here in the first place, and that would be human interaction. So how humans have interacted with their environment and sounds. Um, and then I suppose for human interaction, it's like a circle thing because in order to have like the, the basis of a human interaction is relation and expression. I think that's how humans react with one another. So I think art for something, in my opinion, something that has to classify for art is me for me has to be number one, expressive and number two, relatable. Not even relatable, like I relate to their life, but so, like people have to relate to what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Um, so I think like I think the definition of art is probably something we're not going to manage to to achieve um, at the moment. So I'm going to rephrase it in another but, way. So like when you are creating, second. sorry, can I jump in for for a second? Because I think that like we're not going to define art, but I think art can sh- art art shows the the whole spectrum of human emotions. So if you're going to love art enough to to want to see all of the beauty that that it can portray you know like that like i wander lonely as a cloud and and like some of the most amazing paintings that 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 bring joy and happiness in its purest form but then you have to go to the other end of the spectrum to to and see that that art is also important to show the darkness and the horror and and this the really uncomfortable stuff that you don't want also you know what i mean so like and that's important for for people it might be important for everybody but there's a there is a portion of humanity that, that is really important for and so I, I don't think that you i find it very difficult to say like i i don't think art should be censored yeah well i, th- I think you've hit on an important point there that like you to if you want to experience like all the aspects of being human and actually sometimes art can help you decide where you would draw the line sometimes because yeah. there's things that I've seen that I've been like, okay, there's definitely been a challenge for me there, like in that I don't agree with that for, for myself. Um, so I guess that just brings me to the question uh, I was just about to ask. So when you are creating work, has there been a time when you have said, no, I can't write that, I can't perform that, or I can't do, or like what, what are the lines for yourself that you don't cross and why? I, I started off that way. I was really concerned with what other people thought and it really stifled me as an artist for an awful long time because um, I, I don't think I was being true to myself and I felt that I was more concerned with how I was being perceived than what I was actually creating. Um, and it was only when I, I rid myself of the shackles of what other people thought and just started to create what I thought and believed in, that I felt, that I feel that I, I actually became what, what others would perceive as an artist, and, and what I, what, how I would look at myself as an artist. So now, when I'm writing or when I'm painting or when I'm doing, doing any type of creating or you know performing or anything like that, I, I try not to care what other people are thinking about or what they care about. So I just think I, all I care about at the time is the actual creation and is it true to how I'm feeling and, and, and what I want to what I want to put out there. So yeah. Yeah, Jeff, I mean that's the thing. I mean if you ruminate too much or you fixate too much on what other people think, then realistically you're you're undermining yourself. Absolutely. Then the, uh, then the work is being compromised from, from the get go. And then and then the worst thing about that is you, you could you end up creating something that you're not even necessarily proud of, or that you don't even feel a connection with anymore. It's kind of just homogenized for, for, for the masses, you know? Yeah. Like I know myself, I did that with an EP before, and I put it out because it was kind of the style of music that was in vogue. But sure, it didn't get anywhere. And then I was like, I've no, I've no real connection to this anyway. But in, in terms of censoring yourself, I don't, the lyrics that I write anyway aren't, well, for me anyway, I don't think they're massively controversial or anything like that. But I've no problem with, like, a- alluding to uh, issues with, you know, there was one song I wrote about, like, I, I was thinking I was, I was too getting too fixated with gambling. So I wrote about that. I- I've no shame with that. Uh, I wrote about a breakup recently. Hold nothing back. Put it all in. No embarrassment. No shame. Own, own situations. Um, and then I'm writing a book called The Diary Entries of a Somewhat Degenerate. And that was for, uh, that's when I used to gig with a, 
they've kind of a piss take trad band in Switzerland. So uh, just a concise overview. Four of us in the band. My fake name was Pod in a rapper deep. And I very much bought into this escapism and this kind of uh, departure from reality. But uh, I'm writing about that book and I'm holding nothing back. You know, I'm talking about the, the drinking that went on, taking drugs. Uh, just like I, I used to wear dresses on stage and there was one night I cut my hand with, with a glass and I just started putting the blood on myself and shaking it on the audience. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I, like I don't think you should censor anything. And I, I don't want to hold back because if you hold back, you undermine yourself. You're not giving the truest representation. I, I think like what I'm trying to say is like, is there are there words that you wouldn't use or. Are there things like, you, would say, yes. you wouldn't say politically or you wouldn't represent on stage because you feel that it's not correct. I, believe I wouldn't start saying content like that if there was no context. Like maybe if I was writing about a despicable, detestable character who would use such a word, well then you would need to get into that. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't there's do never it. Been a, there's never been a context in my life that I... Uh... I can't hear you with your mouth full, you sick animal. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there's, never, <laughs> there's never been a point in my, in my life that... Um, I ever refrained from using words or saying what I felt. It's got me into trouble an awful lot, but I mean, you need to remember that an artist is living life as they, uh, is figuring out life as they live it. Like, I mean, if you look at any beautiful artists, um, like Yeats, Yeats is a prime example of this, you know? His life is glorified and his poetry is glorified because he's dead now 100 years. But I mean, the times that he was writing those poems, I'd say a lot of them, some of them would have been controversial. So, I mean, the reason for that is because that's hindsight is 2020. 20. The point I'm trying to make here is that an artist, an artist doesn't know the answers at the time that they are writing the piece. All they know is that their emotions and what they feel is right and what they feel might be wrong. So, I've always, I've always written poems and then realised maybe later on that I changed my views on some things that I had written about. Ooh, that's um, really interesting. I'm just wondering, could you give us an example of that? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, like, there was a lot of there was a lot of times when I started off writing that I that I glorified uh, substance abuse and drug use without. Um, so lately, one thing that you notice is that whenever I have a poem about drugs, I always talk about the positives that I felt, and then like the, the ending paragraph would be, or somewhere along the lines, I would have serious undertones to it. But there was a lot of times beforehand that I just glorified it, and the reason why was because I was living a life that I just was glorified by it, and I was so caught up in the situation that I was just like this is amazing and it's helping me and everyone needs to know about this and, and needs to help everyone. And then like later on down the life, later on down the line, I said to myself, well, like fuck people don't need to know about this because they're going to get caught up in it. So I always kind of altered, altered some pieces to um, make sure that the listener would know that some views are the views of what I'm experiencing at that time. And then there's also views that I've said, well, this is a little bit longer down the line and now I know, that my opinion has changed. Like what? that comes out as a person too. Like so, I think the the thing to that I would be thinking to there is that you're being your honest self at all times. You know, like when you were young, when a little bit younger, and and you were talking about the glorification of of drug use, and now like a year or two down the line, and you're actually coming to some realizations about yourself. That like I think that's just the evolution of the artist. I don't think. Even, like I think even just a quick one. It's almost the evolution of the person, not even the artist, just growing. Yeah. But the yeah, evolution but... of the artist comes with the evolution of the person. Like artists aren't like artists are a uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? They're very like um, basically your normal self on steroids. You have a facade or whatever, or like you are a person that's like Perfect. ten times a hundred times the person that you are. But at the end of the day, the artist is always the human. You cannot create art without living your life to understand the concept that you are writing about. You can't. Can I, can I interject a few little things? Yeah. When I, was, when I was playing with the lead farmers, I definitely was not Greg Clifford. Okay, I'm carrying in frames of references of Greg Clifford, but I bought into this character. I became a parody. So, but Emmett, I actually have a question for you. Just about you were saying you kind of glorified drugs. Say, did you feel it was like a badge of honor, so you kind of had to, and you were holding back about the negatives, or was it just the way you were at the time? No, I just didn't. Ex I just didn't comprehend the negatives. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't. That what I mean? But, but that's what I'm that trying to say. Like sometimes the people would argue, Emmett, um, the same thing about like 
having people, you know, excessively drinking in films or showing gun crime in films or violence or, uh, you know, or sexually predative behaviour or, you know, lyrics in some rap music being very misogynistic, for example. So, like, I, I, I'm gonna, gonna again rephrase the question, ask it another way. Do you think that artists have any kind of moral responsibility? Of no. course, but everyone's... No, no, sorry. Every artist has some sense of a moral responsibility that own morals, but like people's morals are very different. You never go against your own morals when you're writing or when you're performing, uh, but like, what are your morals? But why... So when you're saying you don't go against your own morals, mm. like, is that important for you? Or do you think that like you could if yeah. you wanted to? No, I would never go against my own morals. Never. You can't. And I should never do that. And like, and that's the like, point that Jeff made earlier is that like, it's got me that, in a lot of trouble. I, I think that's different than saying like, sh- should artists have a, a, like a moral compass as such? You know, like responsibility, not a, not a responsibility. Yeah, and this is coming from like from me, who who's most probably well known for my poetry, for you know, socialist poetry or um, political poetry. You know what I mean? Who that would be completely going towards, you know, trying trying to alter society for for the better. Um, I would have like would regard myself as having like a you know my moral compass being pointed in the right way, but I don't think art artists, all artists, should, should have that. You, you, I mean, you. You do not have a moral obligation to anybody. You create for yourself. It's a it's a it's a selfish thing, but without like being self like selfish being a bad thing. Create for yourself. Make sure that you're being true to yourself, and then and then present as such. Otherwise, I find then that you have a, then you, then you're expressing your own your own form of morals. That's your integrity. So you're a moral within itself is you saying to yourself that you're going to do all that. That's part of your morals, mate. And when you're an artist, you express those I'm, morals. But yeah, like I'm saying that, like, like the way I understood the question was like, should you, like, be obliged to be moral and be like this person that people kind of you're, you're aware that people look up to you, or, or such as that? Is, is that wrong to say, Rachel? That that's how you phrase the question? But it's not really about people looking up to you. It's just like, do do you feel that as an artist, you have sort of a, a moral co- like do you do you feel that art should follow certain ethics or have no. I mean I, I agree with you I'm just sort of trying to tease out like why or or why not but it is your it is yours already the, the general peoples I, I mean like I suppose I suppose it's a bit of both, um, because your your morals, like I said, will come into like stopping you from from using certain words or a certain language or phrasing things in a certain way. Um, vitriol in some of my poems, like the, this the, this vitriolic speech that's really crass and really like aggressive and, and harrowing that. I wouldn't put a cross in my everyday life, but it fits the piece and it's exactly how I felt. So it, it has to be there, mm. you know? And, and like, like, I mean, that, that's the beauty of art that, that this is, this is the space that is created. And, and like for it, I mean, this is how we express. And I, I think if you start like questioning it too much and, and censoring it, or even trying to put, morality into it then it dilutes it and then then it's lost and it's lost forever you know like the sense like the, in america this like the, the first amendment right to free speech i mean there's a lot of things that's wrong with, it, with america in my opinion but like I mean, free speech and being able to have that ability to create and put it on a public platform is quite amazing you know what i mean and you and like as emmett said earlier on you're going to have like a duality of things where there's things that you're going to have some things that are really, really good about it and some things that are negative. And that's, that's the case in a lot of things in life. But if you, if you want to stamp out 
the negative and just have positive, you're going to lose so much that it's not even worthwhile. Because hmm. then you're, you're too fixated on how it's going to be perceived. What if the point is that you want it to be perceived in a certain way? Like, say I have an agenda and I have a radical feminist agenda and I'm going to hold a, an art event where I show uh, lots of work that basically argues the point that women are superior to men and, you know, so and very violently or whatever. I think um, it's all invited and welcomed and then it's up to the people who attend it to, to kind of maybe refute it, maybe with another exhibition themselves or trigger other work. I suppose art really is, you hope that it will kind of spawn dialogue and make you think. Absolutely. If less than, less than a minute, so is there anything at all that you would censor when you're making art? Greg. Oh. Um, if I feel strong, strong enough to, um, to want to include it and I have my justification, then I would want to include it. I wouldn't let society's judgment of me impact. But I wouldn't just include something for shock factor or shock value. And Jeff? Yeah, the same. I wouldn't censor anything, but I wouldn't put anything in for shock, shock factor at all, ever. But no, no censorship. Emmet, anything else to yeah, add? I'm just I'm I'm the same as the boys, man. I'm sta I'm saying truth to myself, but once I'm saying truth to myself, I'm putting it out there. Uh, uh, where's the camera? <laughs> Fuck your opinions. <laughs> I mean, I think I wouldn't put anything out there that I wouldn't be comfortable saying myself as a person. Um, mm. So I guess that's a kind of self censorship in a way. Thanks for joining me again this week, and I will see you all next week for another thought experiment. All right. Give us a look at your nips there. In my <laughs>